My message this morning is entitled Selfless Service. If somebody were to describe you with these words, they are always, what is it that you're always doing? If people were talking about you behind your back and you know that they do, what would they say, well, you're always doing and what is it that you always do? Do you always work? Do you always sleep? Do you always shop? Maybe some of you, you're always cheerful or you're always complaining. Maybe you've always got your nose in the book or maybe you're always on Instagram or Facebook or some other form of social media. Maybe you're always at the gym or maybe you're always in the kitchen or maybe you're always eating. What is it that you're always doing? And by the way, have you noticed that most of what we do is about us? We tend to live in a very self-focused world. Have you noticed that? This week I was doing a little research on Google and I stumbled across this website that basically said, uh, it was an ad, and it said this, self-promotion is a skill you need to learn. Now why would they say that? Because you and I, we now live in a look at me world. Right now there are people out there and they're making millions of dollars on Instagram. Now, if you don't know what Instagram is, is basically it's an app on our cell phone, a little program that allows you to share pictures and videos of yourself. And there are people out there today, right now, who are famous for no other reason than people are looking at their photos on Instagram. This has become so popular. 54% of teens, when they choose now, they say what they want for a career, 54% of them want to become famous on social media. In other words, they want to get paid for saying, hey, look at me. And they want to be on YouTube and Facebook or Twitter or whatever, but they want to get paid for you looking at them. And basically, what they want to become is what we would call the goat. Do you know what I mean by the goat? And I'm not talking about the animal or that satanic symbol, okay? We're not going there in this message. Do you know what the goat is? Some of you know this. That's fantastic. It is goat, the greatest of all time, and what 54% of teens today aspire to be is the greatest internet celebrity or social media celebrity of all time. Now, here's the thing. Jesus taught us that if you want to be a part of the kingdom of God, you're going to have to kill the goat. Now, why did I say that? Well, because I find things like this in Scripture. It is Matthew 20 and 16. So the last will be first, and the first will be last. And then in Luke 9 and 23 it reads, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. And then Matthew 16, 25, For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. And then lastly, in Matthew 23 and 11, we read, But the greatest among you shall be your servant. In other words, Jesus is saying, if you want to be a part of the kingdom of God, and you want to follow me, then you have to put an end to the self-promotion and live a life of self-sacrificing love. In other words, it's time to kill the goat. Now, here's what you need to know about service, and I'm glad you're all sitting down. I want you to be safe when you hear me say this. But here's what you need to know about service. Service is not something you do. Service is something you are. In other words, to be a Christian, it means I am a servant. Now, where do I get this from? Well, it actually it comes from um, our scripture reading today, and it is found in Ephesians 2 and 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, if you were to read that, in a more modern translation, it would read, God has made us what we are and given us new lives from Christ Jesus. And long ages ago, he planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. In other words, I am a servant. And you're not just any servant, but you are a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you serve, the Bible says that you're actually serving Christ. Service is the way we live out that great command that says to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Christian, are you a servant? Would you turn to the person next to you and say, I am a servant? And what this text is telling us today Okay, there we go. You're a servant. You're getting into that. 
What this text is telling us today is that when people talk about you, they should be able to say there's a person who is always doing good. Now, when I look into Scripture and I think of people who are always doing good, I think of a disciple. And this disciple, well, her name is Dorcas. How many of you have heard the name Dorcas before? Now, what was Dorcas known for? What was that? Helping the poor. How many of you know her as the person who made clothes or gathered clothes and then gave those to the poor? Is that how we know her? That's how you know her. But in the Bible, it actually says she was known for this. And it's Acts chapter 9 and verse 36. And it says in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. What was she always known for doing? She was always doing good. Now, first, it tells us she's a disciple. And the second thing it tells us is that she was always doing good. In other words, what made this woman a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ is the fact that she lived out these words to love others as you love yourself. In other words, she was always doing good. She kept the commandment to love her neighbor as she loved herself. She was always doing good. Christian, I want to ask you a question. When the angels of God record your name in the books of life, is it written there in heaven that you were always doing good? Or was it written in heaven that you were always trying to be the greatest, well, maybe you were trying to be the greatest vegetarian or vegan? Maybe you were always trying to be the greatest preacher or teacher, or maybe you were trying to be the greatest obeyer of rules and regulations. Maybe you were the greatest at health reform, or maybe you were the greatest at dress reform. Maybe you were so busy trying to be the greatest Adventist of all time, look at me, Lord, that you forgot the one thing that actually made you a disciple, and that is living a life of self-sacrificing love. It is time To kill the goat. You see, Dorcas was known for living a life of always doing good. And so much so, her life was so impactful. It was so important to the growth of the church. It was so important to the spreading of the gospel that when Dorcas died, God actually said to Peter, go raise her from the dead. Do you know why God said that? Because she was an example. This woman was an example of what it means to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ because she lived a life of self-sacrificing love. She was always doing good. And maybe this morning you're asking the question. You say, okay, Pastor Bob, I'm convinced. I I I get it. In this short time, I get it's important to live a a life of service. So how do I become a servant? Well, in the little time I have, I just want to plant this little seed in your mind. Here's how you can become a servant. Become invested. Become invested in what we do here at this church. At this church, we have this vision to become a place of help, hope, and healing. And the only way you can do that is through a life of self-sacrificing love, a life of always doing good, a life of service. That's our vision, to become a place of help, hope, and healing. And I'd also want you to become invested in our mission. Our mission here at this church is to invite and empower saints and seekers to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. That's the mission at this church, to connect people with Jesus, and we are invested in the relationship with Christ. That's what we do, and that's how you become a servant. You become invested in the lives of those around you. So much so that here at this church, we are not living for our glory, but our mission is to make Jesus the greatest of all time. Amen? 